We're in the data lounge today here at Diverse Dimensions, and we've got a reverse engineering project in front of us. Actually, beneath us, I've got a chair here from Herman Miller that is an Ames molded plywood chair. And we've got to reverse engineer the seat and the content on the back. And this is a great example of how we're going to go into the measure menu and how we're going to use the scan methods using parallel lock planes. So I'm going to fire up a, uh, an SAT file in 4.0 and show you guys how to do that today. But first, before I do that, I've got to get into a constructed coordinate system and get into an alignment. And then I'm going to start to track those parallel lock planes relative to that coordinate system. So it should be a fun day. And this is powerful in software where you guys can see how you can track some organic geometry like this uh, using splines or points or just using polylines too. So it's a, it's a very fun tool. So let's go check it out. As you can see, I've got a lot of data already tracked here in my SAT file. I've got the legs, uh, as far as the, the perimeter of the legs already tracked. I've got the perimeter of both the seat and the back already tracked. And the way I've done that with the seat and the back is with a uh, 3D freehand scan. And I've just done lines and arcs on these legs to give the perimeter of those. And what I've also done is on the back portion, I have done parallel lock planes at half inch increments uh, from up and down and from side to side. And those are relative to the XYZ coordinate system that I've already put into the data here. So what I'd like to do though is show you how I'm going to track the seat data. And I'm going to do the same exact parallel lock planes. They're going to be parallel to the X and the Y, which is this direction here. And they're also going to be parallel to the Y and the Z, which will be this direction here. So come on in and check out what I've got in the SAT file here. And then let's go into the measure pull down menu and then we'll go into the scan, and then we'll go into parallel lock planes. Come on in. Now, the, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the bottom of this chair, or the seat pan of this chair, and put these parallel lock planes on there as well. So what I'll do is I will go to the measure pull-down menu, and I'm going to go to the scan, which is a little bit toward the bottom here, and then I'm going to pick up on parallel lock planes. Now before I click on that I want to explain to you is that the parallel lock planes are going to set up parallel planes to wherever I pick and then every time that the probe swipes through those planes it will track another point. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to just bisect this chair in this direction or in the side to side direction and based on my SAT file that looks like the Y and the Z component so let's get into that, and I'll show you once I get to that dialog box how I can pick that. So let's go to the parallel lock planes, and then I'm going to default to these values here. These were already, already set up when I've done this back portion of the chair, so I'm just going to default to that, but I will explain what's going on here a little bit. The increment portion of this dialog box here, it says it's a half inch right now. What that is, is that is the distance between all of the parallel planes that are on the seat or the back or whatever I'm, I'm tracking using my geometry here. And then the number of planes that I'm going to be tracking, I just defaulted to a 100. You could put up to 999, but what it's going to do is it's going to set up 100 parallel planes to the plane that I picked to start from. And then the minimum distance here is the minimum distance between the points that I'll be tracking before it'll start to stitch this line together. So now, this dialog box or this bottom part of this dialog box here, this save as, I'm, uh, I'm picking up on the open polylines here, but I have used open splines, I've used co closed splines, I've used open, po I've used them all. So one thing that I, I often get feedback on from my clients is that the points, if you save as points, the points come back and that is kind of a mess to work with in a CAD program. But what we do here is that open polylines work pretty well once you start to pull this geometry back into a CAD system because what I'll give to my client is an IGES file of all of this data. But what I do here is that open polylines seem to work the best for, uh, for reverse engineering, for sending this data out. And this client's going to pull that into Pro-E, and they're going to lay their own surface patches directly over my, uh, my matrix here. 
So I'm going to stick with that open polyline and say OK to that. Now I'm going to move this out of the way just a little bit just to expose this trihedron down here because what it's asking for now is a selection of a plane. Okay, and I'm going to down arrow that because what I'm interested in is cutting a bunch of planes that are parallel to my YZ. And that YZ right there is the middle of the chair. I've bisected this with a midpoint coordinate system. So I'm going to pick up on the YZ of that coordinate system 1. Now, here's the other thing is there's an offset, right? I've got the option to put an offset into here. Since I'm bisected down the middle of this seat, if I start with a zero offset, everything to the positive side of this plane, which is going this direction in the X, everything that's to the positive direction will actually be a half inch. It'll start to construct those parallel lock planes a half an inch uh, between each. But now if I was to set this as a negative offset, say negative 15, what's going to happen is my first plane, it's going to be parallel to the YZ, and it's going to start over here at about negative 15 inches. And then it's going to start to bisect or to, to slice all of these planes through here at a half inch increment. And it's going to start at negative 15 inches. That's what I want to do. I'm going to say OK to that. And again, too, when you guys are doing this reverse engineering stuff, always do debug. Make sure that 15 inches checks all of geometry that happens over here. Uh, maybe that dimension doesn't have to be 15. Maybe it's 10, I don't know. But, um, but play around with that. Make sure that the numbers that you pick for the offset and the, and the, um, uh, the planes that you pick that you're going to start creating your lock planes from, make sure those are all correct. Okay, so now what it's asking for in my lower left hand of my screen, it says start or pause the scan with your trigger, which is the front button here. So I'm going to take my arm, and now what I've got are parallel planes in this direction that are slicing this way. So every time I take my arm through them, I will start to develop a polyline. So I'm just going to start right about here, and I'm going to hit the green button. And every time I drag through one of those parallel planes, it's tracking a point. And I'm just going to swipe back a little bit like this too. And again, I'm just going very lightly on this surface. I don't like to put any of the marks on this surface at all. And I'm going to work my way back and forth. Come down this last one here. And then I'll hit the green button to stop that scan. Okay, now it's asking in the bottom left-hand corner. It's saying, press the back button when you're done. So I will hit the back button. It's asking me, would I like to keep the stream? I'm going to say yes with the front button. Now, notice what it's doing is it's going to set up each individual scan line with its own feature name. Okay, here's the, here's the one thing I know I always say 100% of the time I change the name. Okay, you caught me in a lie on that one because what I'm doing here is there's going to be so many of these lines that it doesn't make sense for me to name each one of these lines. So I'm just going to default to Pharaoh's parallel lock plane number identification. So I'll hit the green button and say OK. Green button and say OK. But now notice in the back of my screen, in fact, I should move this out of the way just a little bit more. Notice what it's doing is I'm starting to create these lines here that are parallel to the YZ plane, and it's made up of those individual points as I was swiping my probe through the planes. And I'll keep hitting my front button here, and notice every time I do that, it's creating a new line back on the seat. And I'll go through there kind of quick here like this. Bup, 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 Okay, we're getting there. Almost done. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll put the arm down here a second. And what I'll do is just kind of dynamic rotate around just to show you what that's going to look like. I'll pick up on one of them here. And now you can kind of see that it's forming the contour of that seat based on those parallel lock planes, and that was based on this coordinate system here, based on the YZ plane.
And again, I could have continued all the way down to the back side of that chair, all the way to the perimeter here. But just for this example, I just wanted to take it about midstream here, midsection, just to show you how it was going to form this, this lip on the chair. Now, here's one very important thing to note. When you guys are doing this reverse engineering and you're using the, the scan mode, the, the only thing that is being tracked is the center of the probe. Since Faro doesn't know the vector that I'm actually approaching this seat, the only thing it can track is the center of the probe, which is totally fine. What you have to do is when you adjust this out, tell your CAD designer that you used a, a six millimeter probe in this situation, and what they'll do is when they lay their surface patches over top of the matrix of the seat and the back, they will actually offset their surface by three millimeters, which will accommodate for the radius of the probe. So always remember that even on these 3D uh, freehand scans, the only thing I'm tracking right there is the middle of the probe as I swipe around here as I scan that perimeter. So all scan detail will have to be offset the radius of the probe. Okay, I'll hit the 7 key just to get into this isometric view here. So don't forget, when you do this type of reverse engineering with these parallel lock planes, just make sure that your planes are set up square to what your part is, if that's possible, if you can do that. Like in this situation, it works out great that I've got it on my table. I've got it fixtured so that it's bisected directly in this, this side to side and, and perfectly in this fore aft component as well. So the parallel lock planes work great when you can pick them from the, uh, from the coordinate system. And don't forget, whenever you do the reverse engineering, you can't offset for the probe, so always tell your client or your end user what size probe you used so they can offset the surface.